attraction marketing is everything, right? Um, I think we were talking earlier about how I want to attract a more luxurious clientele or affluent clientele. So I need to put content out in order to attract that. Welcome everybody to today's webinar. Uh, I'm excited for this one. This is our pre-Thanksgiving. This is probably our last one that we will do um, before Thanksgiving being next week. Um, but we have a special guest with us today, somebody who is has created just, I think, an exceptional brand. And when I've seen what she was doing, I immediately got on the phone with her. We talked about it. And I was extremely impressed on what you've done at such a young age. And today our guest is Julianez Diaz. Is that right? Yes, Julian is bias. Hi, everyone. Bias. <laughs> yeah. um, so today we're going to talk about like branding and some of the things that you've done. So why don't you start off by telling us your story, like how you got into real estate and then how you've been able to kind of leapfrog so many people. And I, what I would say is a really uh, uh, heavily agent populated area in the the, the Tampa area, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. how, how you're setting yourself apart and start there. Okay. Well, hi, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I am a real estate advisor in Tampa, Florida, just like Randy mentioned. And I actually started um, uh, as a assistant for a broker. That's kind of how I got started into like, the real estate market here in Tampa. But um, my father actually is a real estate investor. So I have always kind of been in that um, space or in that uh, um, environment. But I started working as an assistant for a broker and I was, she was very, you know, old school, like she liked things done a certain way. And I was trying to tell her, you know, do, do this on social media, you should do this and do that. And at the time, I actually had a marketing agency. So I was doing her marketing for her. And um, I thought to myself, well, I know like she can be successful if she applies these tactics and these strategies of using social media and online marketing and things like that. So why don't I do it for myself and see what happens? So I quit that job. Uh, I got my real estate license and that was in 2020 during the pandemic. And um, that's how I really got started. And I, I joined a brokerage, a local brokerage here um, at the time and started actually cold calling and just doing that cold prospecting until I was able to, you know, um, uh, build my social media and build my community and start, you know, getting uh, leads from social media and more organic. And now I'm here <laughs> a few years later. So, so growing your business, it, you, do you have a team? So I, right now I change brokerages and I am under a small boutique brokerage um, called Align Real Estate, um, which is led by Tiffany Pantosi, a, a well-known realtor in the South Florida area. And yeah, that's who, uh, who I'm with right now. Okay. And from your, from a lead generation standpoint, like YouTube, I think you're at like 16,000, 16,000 yeah. uh, subscribers. And where are you at on Instagram now? Um, almost at 10K. <laughs> almost right. at so, 10,000. So those channels, would you mm -hmm. say that those channels are yielding you new business every single week, month? Absolutely. Yeah. So why mm -hmm. don't you talk a little bit about um, how you, what you did to grow each one of those brands, right? Or, or each okay. one of those channels, because like, I know a lot of people who talk like Instagram and then everyone's like, Instagram's dead. You can't grow it, but you know, you're obviously proving that wrong. So uh, mm -hmm. talk a little bit about what you do to grow your Instagram page to get followers in the real estate market. Yes. So. For, in order to get followers and get clients, right? Because at the end of the day, that's what we want. We want to get business. Um, you really have to be consistent. You have to put yourself out there as the expert in your market. And attraction marketing is everything, right? Um, I think we were talking earlier about how I want to attract a more luxurious clientele or affluent clientele. So I need to put content out in order to attract that. Um, so that's really, you know, um, how I've been able to build my business right now. It's like all of pretty much all of my business comes from social media, either from 
agent referrals or clients that find me directly on social media and want to work with me. So it's really about the content, consistency, providing value, and um, attraction marketing, like I mentioned, um, so, for those for Instagram. So what, is, what, do you, what do you consider attraction marketing? Mm -hmm. So for example, if I want to work in a specific area or I want to uh, be the uh, expert in a specific neighborhood or in a specific area in my market, I'm really going to focus on putting content out regarding that, about the schools, about the uh, market updates, about the prices, about uh, developments that are coming to the area so that I am known as the agent for that. And if I want to work in a certain price point, I'm not going to be posting about, for example, um, $300,000 or $500,000 under properties. You know, I'm going to majorly put out content about property tours over 500K um, in my market, like new construction, uh, property tours, those do really well. Um, I'm still going to do business in all price points, though, of course, but attracting, I, I want to be able to attract um, that kind of higher price point clientele. And, and do you include like a call to action in your in your videos and in your content? Like, I mean, are you saying contact me for this, or if you wanna, if you want the school guide, contact me for this? Are you are you asking for information, or are you just putting it out there it, with good faith, thinking it's going to come back to you? Um, I really believe a lot in systems and processes and planning and having everything be strategic. So. Every time I put a piece of content, there's always a call to action in the post. And in my bio, there's always a link, the link in my bio, right? And I utilize that like link tree or I use like a links page is what they call it. And I have a very specific system. So for example, my main call to action on my Instagram and across all my platforms is schedule a brief 15 minute call with me. And that goes into my Calendly page. That Calendly is connected to my CRM, which has other systems and processes. And also high note, it's kind of part of that system um, later on in the process, but um, there's always has to be a call to action um, and you wanna make it very easy and simple um, as a consumer. Like I, I do a lot of consumer perspective research and we really wanna make it as easy as possible, uh, simple and you know straight to the point, but also obviously like being responsive and providing value at the end of the day as well. <laughs> So when you talk about the content that you're creating for Instagram as an example, are you, is it more videos? Is it more reels? Is it more stories? Is it because like some people say like, you know, the single post is dead. I, like, I don't know, you know, you hear these conflicting things from different, you know, experts, but it, in, I mean, when you got 10,000, 15,000, I mean, when you're in the thousands of followers, like that's, that's a CRM in itself in essence, right? right? Like mm -hmm. that's what people don't understand. Like the bigger your database is, the bigger your network is, the more deals are gonna come to you. But what is the type of content, you know, what format um, is working the best? For me, I am very passionate about video marketing. So I love um, having a video marketing based strategy. So you obviously my YouTube channel, um, a lot of the content that I post on Instagram is reels because that's what I enjoy the most um, uh, of creating and posting. And I'm also getting into TikTok now. So of course, that's another big video marketing platform. But definitely right now, if you're looking to grow your Instagram, reels is the place is, is the place to start, the place to be, because it has the best algorithm. Regardless, you know, of course, like right now, it's a little more saturated than when it got uh, introduced to us. But still, there's a great, great opportunity at your fingertips um, for for get for growing your followers and getting exposure and getting clients through okay. reels. So mm -hmm. through reels, and do, mm -hmm. so you how often? So you say consistency, right? How often mm -hmm. are you posting a reel versus a story versus a actual post? Okay. So ideally, um, for me, it's once a day on story, once a day on post, regular post, once a day on uh, reels, um, which for me, a post and a reel is kind of the same thing because I, I don't, um, I see them as kind of the same thing. Um, but right now, obviously, I'm in the process of like hiring people to help me out with this because it can be overwhelming. And my best advice for everyone, because I know 
I, I, it can get overwhelming is consistency is very, um, you define it for yourself. If you're able to post three posts uh, per week, that's great, but do it consistently until you're able to level up, you know, and post more. Um, but yeah, that would be my, uh, kind of my posting schedule and, and my advice when it comes to that. So, so when you're create so when you're creating content and I've been doing, I've been doing more and more of, uh, of this and it, it is, it's hard. Like I, I personally think it's hard. I mean, I didn't grow up in front of a selfie camera, you know, it, it's, it's goofy. So what do you do from a planning perspective? Like, do you plan on Friday for the next three weeks of content? Is that what you're doing? Like, because I like think of an idea and then I'm like, I think it's valuable, but then maybe other people don't. And then I get this like, ah. so how do you go about structuring and planning? And and your reels and some of the things that I've seen you do are like absolutely beautiful. It's got to be a better thought out process than what I do, where I'm like, ooh, real estate agents always ask me this question. I want to like answer it, you know, once and for all. Yeah, um, it's definitely a process and it's definitely taken me a while to figure out the best process for me. Um, and I still don't have it perfected, but it's uh, so what I do is. I, the best way that I found is batch creating content about a month ahead of time. So right now I have shot all of my content for this month, the rest of this month and the following month. Um, and I have it all set up in like a little Trello board, which is what I use for um, visualizing everything. And um, I have an, a running list of ideas all the time. Like, just like you said, if I come, if I'm driving and I get an idea, I write it down in my notes or in my Trello ideas area. And um, that way, when I sit down for that following month to plan ahead the next month's content, I will have that bank ready to go. And in my planning, I'm very flexible because sometimes there's trends, right, that come up and you're like, you have to do it because um, it's trending and it's not going to be trending next month or whatnot. So um, I always leave room for flexibility on um, those kind of uh, kind of uh what, what is the word, more impromptu content, uh, always leaving room for that. And that's really what I found that helps, batch creating content, batch and doing everything like ahead, uh, like a month ahead of time so that it, there's enough time to edit, optimize and all of those things. And, and when, you, when you're coming up with ideas, like do you just have like a, a sheet of paper and you're like, I wanna talk about this, I wanna talk about this because like, Right now, going into a transitioning market, I think everybody needs to understand and figure out a way to shine through the noise, right? And if less homes sell in 2023 than they did in 2022, which is probably going to be the case, um, how do you come up with ideas and content that are going to resonate with people? Are you just like, Again, doing it in good faith, like just put it out into the world and let it come back to you. What's your process there? Um, so for creating content in this transitioning process, um, I will always go back to my purpose and my why. I think it's really important that I mention that, like really having a clear vision of what you're trying to do with your brand. It's really important. Are you trying to just get followers? Are you trying to um, just get clients um, or just to do it, to do it? Or are you trying to do something bigger and help others and um, build a community and things like that? So that's one thing I've always looked back to. And then for this transitioning market and kind of how to stand out, I mean, this is really the time. And I think to, statistically speaking, a lot of people are going to drop out of the, of, of being a realtor. You know, they have a, they have had a few good years during the pandemic and during this crazy market. And now where they see, oh my God, I actually have to work now. They're gonna drop out of the race, as someone would say. So it's your time to put yourself out there as an expert advisor. Everyone is asking themselves, or even me asking me, how's the market? What's going on? Like, so you should take that and um, and do content about it. And statistically, also speaking, Google um, said that this is the most research topic right now and mostly googled um is how's the market market recession market crash all of those keywords um are doing really well on content because there's also the national news right maybe the national news does not apply specifically to your market because you have a lot of demand like in florida 
we're always going to be in demand, you know, um, there's different factors than just the national news. So I take that opportunity to educate my clients, put myself out there as the expert advisor, explaining them of the different programs that they're out there um, for buyers right now and for sellers as well. So just really taking the opportunity to educate and that's going to put yourself out there as the expert advisor and help you attract, um, you know, more clients. Gotcha. Yeah. So I want to transition real quick and then we're going to get into some of the ways that you're using high note, right? Like making it through this next downturn. I see one of my longtime old friends that I have not seen or talked to in a long time, Ron, on this call. And um, he, I mean, he crushed it in the last downturn. He's always been one of them top agents. Do you think, I mean, it's 2000, 2008 was obviously different than it is now. And I think will be. It's definitely different challenges and there will be agent attrition over the next 12, 24, 36 months for sure, right? So utilizing Instagram almost as a CRM in itself, using YouTube as a search and discovery tool, because that's more of what YouTube is. Like Instagram, you can get people to kind of follow you, right? That YouTube, there's kind of a different methodology. That's more like Google, like what's going on with the housing market? What's this? So, so real quick here, why don't you talk about um, how you've been successful with YouTube and then are you adapting to the YouTube shorts, which I think are going to be an absolute goldmine for people. Like not a lot of people are doing YouTube shorts yet. And I think people spend more time on YouTube uh, based upon the search or the research that I've seen consuming content than they do anywhere. So let's talk about that real quick and then we'll get into your uh, I know use cases. So for YouTube, that's a whole nother um, animal in and of its own. It's very different than any other social media platform. It's hard, the hardest platform to grow on uh, because it, it's been established for so long and, and everything like that. So for me, I really found my success in sharing my story in sharing my journey with others about how I started my um, real estate journey at a, such a young age and just really sharing the true authentic behind the scenes of what it's been like um, through all of the ups and downs. Um, so that's where I really found my success. Now, right now, I'm at a point where I want to pivot from there and I want to start um, to keep doing that kind of content, but also sharing more about local, hyper local content because mm -hmm. that's really how you're able to get, you know, build a brand with the content I've already established, but also get clients is through hyper local content. Because just like you said, people are searching on YouTube. Um, uh, and right now, commerce and content is a huge thing. Um, as a consumer, wherever I'm trying to buy something, I always go to YouTube to, to check out the reviews, check out the, um, uh, you know, other experts that are talking about it. So same thing goes for real estate. People are looking um, where, what are the best schools in X market or, um, why move to this area versus this? And so you need to put yourself out there as, um, in, in, in that sense. And so that's where I'm trying to gear my content. Um, and also with like local property tours and things like that, those do really well. And you don't need any like fancy equipment really. Um, I have seen a lot of creators be very successful with just like their phone, a little microphone set and, um, gimbal very um easy to start with but that's really where i found my success with um with youtube and just really uh, it took a while so definitely you know be consistent again and uh, keep posting until something just takes off that's so really hy how hy hyper local hyper local content very very niche down right like right. taking advantage of the keyword searches like what is the best best place for date night in downtown tampa like on the weekends mm -hmm. right you got a little exactly. montage of, of three recommendations right the top three places to go on date night downtown mm -hmm. tampa using that as a headline right and are, right. are you transitioning any of that information into shorts because again my challenge is i shoot a video like this horizontal yeah. for one platform then like this and then like this and i know, I know before long it's going to be i got to shoot it upside down but you know like <laughs> right um transitioning yeah. into shorts yeah it can be a little bit challenging having to deal with all the horizontal vertical and what i have found is that um if you shoot one horizontal video you know far enough where there's space for text and things like that then you are able to split it up and and use it on short reels and tiktok now 
for me right now, I'm hiring a VA to help me um, take all, because I have a bunch of content already that needs to be put into um, shorts. So I have done a few here and there, but nothing consistent just yet. Because again, it's a lot of work. It's trying to do, um, you know, posting on all of these different platforms and editing and cutting and, and things like that. So um, definitely something that I'm recommending, you know, my peers and my marketing, um, people that I'm asking for marketing advice, uh, because it's a brand new, uh, relatively new um, uh, version of YouTube. So the algorithm is going to be better. And um, if you could post inconsistently, you'll be able to uh, get more exposure. So that's something I'm working on for sure. Awesome. Cool. I appreciate you sharing all those tips. Let's, yeah. let's, uh, I mean, if somebody picks up on one, you know, like YouTube shorts or stories or reels or, you know, posting about this, some people don't want to be behind camera and they don't have to be because there's ways to do faceless videos too. Um, you 100%. can find very, 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 very talented people on Upwork. Um, I'm not a video Fiverr. editor, Fiverr. I'm not a video editor or, you know, I don't know how to put all the work fancy words on or the logos that pop in. And, right. and I found just incredible, mm -hmm. incredible people for anywhere from $5 an hour to $15 an hour on Upwork on Fiverr that do all that stuff. And if you don't right. like one, you know, I mean, you are investing in your business. Awesome. You can always have somebody else do one as well. I was blown away at how the crappy video that I shot, they made it be and look and appear so awesome. So um, anybody that is it. interested in doing content, grab a couple people, go to Upwork, go to Fiverr, try a couple people out. You'd be pretty surprised at some of the quality of work that they do. And they're very, very grateful for that work. And I'm, I just think that mm -hmm. that's awesome. So yeah. transitioning into ways that you're using high note, let's, mm -hmm. let's go there, right? Like where are your best use cases? How are you using it? If you got some stuff to share, like let's, let's do it. Yeah. So I, right now I use it for, um, the big thing I use it for is for showing binders, um, digital showing binders. So I, for every listing that I have, I have a physical, oh, you can't really see it. Um, like a physical binder with, all of the properties information, everything you can think of. And what I wanted to do was take this and turn it into a digital version. Version, But not only that, with Hino, I'm able to track everything. So what I do is I do two digital showing binders. I do one branded and I do one unbranded because I can send the Hino link of the unbranded one to agents um, for them to share with their clients. Because I know everything about the property. I'm the expert, right? So I um, want the information. I want to have control of the information in a way. So by sharing just the unbranded link, something simple that they can reshare with their clients, then, um, you know, uh, they're getting everything they need to know. Property survey, they're getting uh, the floor plan, all of the upgrades that was done to the property, um, uh, 3D tours. I mean, you name it, everything is in there. And uh, with the branded one, I use it for open houses, for example. So if someone, um, I want to follow up with them on an open house email, I can send them that link so they can revisit and kind of remember the property, check out the photos, um, all of those things. So that's really one of the main things I use HighNote for, or the big things is for the showing binders for my listings. So the unbranded i love the unbranded binder to agents because like then it's not going to like piss off the agent or right. it almost incentivizes them to send it out and then they kind of look like a rock star and you exactly. also are being notified when people are opening opening it and then how many times so if you sent it to an agent you know that they opened it and then if they forward it you're also being notified like okay like um you know, Norma sent this out to somebody because it's been opened a half a dozen times. Like this thing's getting some traction. The one at the house, are you, how are you getting people there? Are you utilizing a like QR code or so how do people I, get to open houses? So I do have an open house or a QR code um, little flyer. Um, so this is actually a property flyer that I have. And at the back I have, oh my gosh. <laughs> this virtual background. <laughs> there we go. Oh my God. You see the little QR code in the background? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's in the flyer uh, for the property uh, flyer. And it's also in like a little stand that I have. 
um, where um, they can scan it and learn more and kind of look through it and uh, look at the pictures and things like that, that they wouldn't be able to do with the actual physical binder. So that's how I share it. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, yeah. I can't then, like, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, with the um, new feature that you guys recently released of the form, I always add the forms to um, those open houses ones at the bottom. I think it's great to just capture leads and, you know, that might have not signed in or anything like that and want to learn more about the property. I've been using that um, quite a bit for those listing related high notes. Yeah, I think I think any public facing high note use like now it's turned into this like lead generation monster for people because they're putting that form on basically any outbound marketing, whether they're doing an open house, would you like to see more houses like this? Would you like to set up a meeting? Or when people are using it for property marketing, right? Mm -hmm. People now more than ever, because the market has shifted, are going to have to market the properties more and more and better. Whereas eight months ago, you could literally take it with a Polaroid camera, take a picture right. of the Polaroid, put it on the MLS, and you get 33 offers, you know, $15,000 above asking. Yeah. Those times have kind of gone away. And now mm -hmm. things have transitioned into like the person that can market the property the best, that can have the most exposure, the most amount of eyeballs. And, you know, people are utilizing High Note for that because they're posting it on Facebook versus uploading all the photos. Like, They'll upload one photo, then they'll give a little description, and then from there they'll go uh, post the high note link. That's where right. they can consume all of your information right there, right? Versus, yeah. heaven forbid, you post an MLS link on Facebook, you know? So, right. yes. And I've always been the kind of person to love like tracking packages and tracking everything. So, having the tracking feature within high note has been, or the analytics feature within high note and being able to see like what people are opening, what people are spending the most time on. It's really helpful um, on the back end as well. So, so what do you do? You're notified that somebody opened something. What is your action? And, and people, people ask me this all the time. They're like, well, what, what do I do? Like, what do you do when people start clicking on stuff? Mm -hmm. Well, I, if they click on it one time and they spent very little time on it, I really won't pay much attention. But if it's their second time or their third time and they keep going back and forth. And so if they're unrepresented, um, I would reach out directly to the client and, or the lead, right? And see, hey, is there any information I can get to you? Um, you know, and me, I won't even, I won't say that, hey, I was looking that you, I was, I saw that you were looking at this specifically because I don't want them to say, oh, you were tracking me or whatever. But I will mention something related to that topic in case they need anything. Oh, I saw you were looking or um, uh, do you have any questions about the property you know, survey or anything like that? That's kind of um, un, uh, not directly related to the, the tracking, but to the topic that they were looking at, if that makes sense. And um, yeah, just trying to get them to the next step. You know, can we schedule another showing or um, are you looking to submit an offer? Things like that. Do, do, like, do you ever shoot somebody a text and be like, hey, I noticed that you watched the video three times? Like, I mean, are they like, oh, that's weird? <laughs> um, that's like my nightmare. I don't want to, uh, I don't want people to think I'm like stalking them or anything. But sometimes, you know. Huh? Too big brother-ish, right? Like yeah. if, if somebody clicked and watched your video two or three or four times, like that's probably a good indicator to reach sure. out. And you have all these CRMs out there you know, that are like lead scoring and they're based upon this or that, like what's based mm -hmm. upon what I would consider more valuable is the amount of actions that have been taken. Just because somebody opened your email doesn't mean anything, but you know that they watched your video three times. That's a big deal. Like, right. And, you know, I, I, I love, um, it's really important to have a good CRM and just to have everything set up, automations, follow up and everything. So I use follow up boss. I love it. And um, within that platform, I have other automation set up. Um, if they keep opening my emails, which is usually where I hide the high note link, um, if they keep opening the emails and, and clicking on the emails, I get a, a notification. So follow up boss will continue to touch base with them. And I will continue to touch base with them if they're really active. And um, until we get them to the next stage, right? Until we get them uh, an offer or under contract or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Fub is a Fub is a fantastic product, you know. And 
real estate is a contact sport. I mean, you, you got to continuously ping people and touch them and reach out to them and it's with an omni-channel approach, follow right. them on Facebook, like like their photos when, you know, they're <laughs> playing with the kids in the backyard, you know, really, really reel them in. Everybody's like, oh, well, I buy leads and heaven forbid it doesn't convert on the absolute first attempt. You know, I think on average, yeah. it's like 16 connection points to do so. But you utilizing the high note, then even every single one of those actions they do is adding up in credibility, right, in the minds of that potential consumer, right, that potential buyer or seller, right? Mm -hmm. So you're elevating your brand and elevating your influence, Service. I would say, over them, right? Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah, that's, that's just the... Yeah. Uh, that's the kick butt way to do it. What are some other things that you're doing um, right now with High Note that's helping you mm -hmm. in your business? We got the showing, you have the house stuff. Mm -hmm. Another way that I've been getting amazing feedback on and great turnout on, uh, uh, on, on business is using it for referral partnerships. So I have a system and a process for everything, but for referrals, um, after, you know, we did the intro call, I just send them an intro email and within that intro email, there's like a link of a high note link of, um, a presentation I have, uh, specifically for referral partners that, um, may be through interviewing other agents or whatnot. So I have that set up and it has a lot of information about myself, my brokerage, why me, um, my experience, my testimonials, uh, what other referral partners have to say, my market and, um, you know, what to, ex what your clients can expect and all of those things in that presentation. And um, I really see people going through it and, um, you know, reading that information because it's really important, right? You, especially if they don't have a relationship directly with me or they don't know me so, uh, personally, uh, it's a great way for them to get to know me, get to know my business and um, get them, you know, uh, to select me as a referral partner here. So I've gotten the great feedback on that. So the referral bar partner network, um, being in Tampa, right? There's a there's a massive wave of people moving down there. I personally know a few people that just just moved from Michigan down there. Um, do you do you how do you get that information out? Because I think a referral network is just massive. If you can attract like people are moving into your town. Like, how do you get your message out to different people to refer you business? Because like, I don't know if an agent is going to refer you business from Bradington versus like just drive, you know, 45 minutes to do the deal. Where do you target that? And where are you strategically placing it to build that referral network that you currently are building? Yeah. So my business is, I would say, um, like, 90% social media or organic. It's all organic. All of my business comes organic for me. Um, so a lot of my, pretty much all of my referral partnerships come through the community that I have built and the value that I put out there online through Instagram and through YouTube. Um, that's really how I get all of my referrals um, is through, through those platforms. So again, putting myself out there as an expert, putting out value for realtors and for, you know, the consumer, buyer, seller, and uh, being very, um, you know, optimizing my Instagram to be search friendly. So um, having my name, you know, uh, that's how I always ask them, how did you find out about me? How did you hear about my services? And they usually say, it's, I either find it through a video, a hashtag uh, that I was looking at, or a um, search on the Instagram where they said Tampa Realtor. Now Instagram is becoming a search engine, so you can search people what, what they do. And so I have found that that's also uh, provided a lot of success is using that optimization. And in your does, does what part what portion of your business do you, would you say that is coming from your referral network? Um, so the big portion of my business, I don't know the specific numbers, but the big portion is definitely um, direct uh, leads from social media that find me. Right, right. Um, the next big one is referral partnerships and then open houses and sphere of influence and past clients. Those are like my yeah. top lead sources. I'd be curious if you track the course of a year, and I think everybody should, um, like from each channel. You know, it's like if I close 20 sides a year and my average price point is 575, 
you know what your GCI is going to be based upon that. And I just did a uh, business trip, business boot camp yesterday uh, with uh, Break to Broker, and they were talking about that. And then identifying every year, I get consistently three to six deals from my referral partners. I get eight from Instagram. I get 11 from YouTube because like that's scalable. You know, you, you can know, like, you know, where to double and triple down in your efforts. And I think so many agents, they do a little bit of this and a little bit of this. And we just came back from the NAR conference. Oh, I'm going to sign up for a mailer service. It's just a little bit, little bit, but not a whole lot of tracking for those specific deals. And I think that we need to get surgical and strategic over the next mm-hmm. two years on where our business is coming from, which leads are converting at which percentage, because you, like you said, so many of your business, so many of your deals come organically, like through Instagram. And mm-hmm. I would also be curious on some of the numbers of for every 1000 followers I get, on average, I'm getting two customers, right? Or whatever that case right. may be. That would be a mm-hmm. super interesting um, statistic to be able to really dial yes. down like how many YouTube views or how many subs you're getting, all of those things broken down on a granular level so that it's just like, mm-hmm. this is the playbook. Create two pieces of content on Instagram every week, F- grow your followers by X amount. And as long as you're putting out relatively good content, it will materialize into this amount of buyers and sellers. Right. No, I agree with you. And for me, I, that's why I love follow a boss. Everything lives in there for me. And so I, the reporting feature allows me to see like exactly my percentage of uh, lead sources and like where they're coming from and how many of them converted and all of those things. I don't know the numbers at the top of my head. I should, and I will look into it. But um, as an overall, those are kind of like the, the lead sources that um, have been working for me. And how, that's how I know for next year. Okay, so Instagram was like the biggest out of all the social platforms, the one that provided me the most amount of leads. So I'm going to like double down on it and also, you know, uh, expand to other platforms and see what's missing on the other platforms. Because I want everyone, every one of them to be successful. So maybe I need to tweak something or things like that. Um, so uh, that's why I like that feature of follow a box to see where everything is coming from. Got it. So I, I want to ask you this question from a feedback perspective, like, High Note was designed to help people present a lot of information in a very simplistic way that's beautiful. When you send out your High Notes or when prospects interact with your High Notes, what is the feedback from the consumer and the feedback from the agents that you're getting? And are you beating out other people just because of the way you present yourself and with your information? 100 percent i think that um just by utilizing a, a high note it really already makes you stand out in the first place um the feedback that i've been getting and i love to ask feedback and uh just the consumer perspective is that you know it's very easy to navigate um i love how professional it makes you look and um especially like referral partners and things like that that's what you have said um and it and i it had all the information I needed to know all in one place. So those are the kind of feedback that I've been getting um, by just utilizing I know, but it definitely like has elevated um, the cert. It's a part of, you know, it elevates your brand and elevates your service because they see that you're putting in the work in, in a way and alongside with everything else that you're doing. It's just um, very helpful. And I don't want to say too much about this, but there is a success story on our team. It's not my, that's why I don't, why don't, I don't want to share it, but um, our team leader, was not uh, was um, trying to get gain this referral partner or referral a specific referral from a very high end client from a very well known national um, uh, realtor um, and she sent him a, a high note presentation. And he opened it and she was able to track everything, what he was seeing. And uh, she ended up getting the referral uh, for that very, very high end um, client. And so it just goes to show that um, it, it, we have to do everything we can to stand out, to make ourselves look professional and uh, provide lots of value um, at the end of the day. So it's a little success story there as well. Awesome. Yeah, I was talking to a, a team leader last night and she had mentioned 
that she didn't know that she was competing against three other agents like this. I mean, right, the, the, the real estate relationship is funny because it's like they date these buyers and sellers are dating agents, but they don't quite tell them about the other one. And she said that this client chose her and she told her specifically, she goes from the other clients or from the other agents, I got that traditional email with some links and with this. And they were like, with you, I just clicked on the link from my phone and everything was just like beautifully there. It wasn't, they weren't downloading stuff. That was the deciding factor, allegedly. And I was like, I, I could see that if you, if you're constantly obsessed with the customer experience, like Amazon mm -hmm. is, is obsessed with creating a, a, an easy, awesome customer experience. I think that that's where high note can really help a lot of people shine because like the experience is great. Like you watch a video in line, you're doing this and you can deliver any type of material from it. So how amazing is your customer experience then? And have you educated them in that experiential environment to get them to say, well, Juliana, this is like the no brainer. Like everything is there, everything about this, as long as we find the house, uh, right. or, or grand price, like I'm gonna choose you. Yeah, and a lot of people think that have uh, being in the luxury space is about the price points and, and that aspect, but it's really about the customer experience. Um, if you look at you know some of the most prestigious or luxurious brands, it's all about creating that unique experience, and you can do that at any price point. You know, you can provide a luxury experience, um, a, a very a well thought out client experience for your for your customers and that alone will make you stand out and um you know of course like get referrals and things like that so um this is all part of that awesome awesome um is there anything else that you would like to share before i tell everybody how to follow you and get with you um, I think I think we pretty much covered it all. I mean, there's there's really no um, limit to what you can do in High Note. You can really customize it um, and make it your own. There's so many more ideas. So if they want to get together and like um, like follow me and, and like send me a message or anything like that of other other things that I use it for, I'm happy to share and um, and tell them more. Awesome. Yeah. Anybody that's watching this, definitely check out. Juliana's YouTube and um, Instagram page, like follow it, like learn from some of these people. She's, she's a rising star. And I think you're going to continue to crush it for sure because you've kind of figured it out, but like steal, I always say steal like an artist, right? Like follow people like you, I will never be you and you will never be me. Right. But I can take tips and tricks and things that you're doing and implement those into my business. So I think that that's certainly there. And if anybody wants to contact Juliana is maybe, you know, she might share some of her high notes that she's done as well. I definitely mm -hmm. recommend doing that. Um, yeah. I appreciate your time today. I appreciate everybody here's time today. I hope everyone have a, has a great Thanksgiving and um, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you guys. Bye everybody. want to keep getting tips hit the subscribe button as well thanks for watching and we hope you get a lot out of this